Good morning, everyone. We're here with uh, Michelle Haas, the head of uh, IB Chemistry at UWC, and I'm going to be asking her a few questions with regards to the Group 4 Chemistry Extended Essay. Um, Michelle, as head of chemistry, what types of research questions would you like students to consider for their Group 4 EE? Um, so for chemistry, the best types of research questions we come along are those that are kind of driven by genuine curiosity. Um, so as chemists, we should always kind of be questioning the world around us. And, and when students come with a research question that either links to um, one of their personal interests or something they've noticed about the world around them, those are the ones that make the most interesting um, research question. And once you've got to that point, we would want you to be looking at, well, what kind of variables within this research topic can I possibly change or investigate? And overall, we can think of two different types of research questions, those which generate kind of continuous data, which is a line graph in the end where both the independent and dependent variable are um, numerical, or those that collect kind of bar chart data. Now, to be honest, we do have both types, um, but those with the continuous data tend to be the ones that are score the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Can you explain what is meant by primary versus secondary data and how students can use these for their uh, chemistry extended essays? Okay, so it's quite simple in science subjects. So the primary data is the experimental data that they collect in the lab. Um, so to kind of whatever method they've chosen, they're collecting their repeats and so on. Um, and the secondary data is their research side of it. So it can be um, data that you collect from maybe a database um, or it can also be data that's come from someone else's experiment that you've got through a research journal. Um, and the way that we would use them in chemistry is to compare the two. Um, so you can compare it just in terms of the trend, like does your trend match the trend that you've seen in another journal or another study? If so, how does that affect how confident you are in your conclusion, for example? Um, or if you wanted to go into more detail, you could look at it in terms of error. So how, how precise or how accurate is your data versus the data that you've seen in another study. Interesting, okay. So are there any good resources that students can access for their chemistry EE? Uh, there's lots, plenty, <laughs> and it, it kind of depends on which stage of the EE process um, you're in. If you're right at the beginning and you're just kind of looking for the broad topic, um, there's huge amounts of kind of online resources in terms of like, Nuffield Chemistry, Chemistry World, these are all kind of science publications that have kind of up-to-date current goings-on um, in chemistry. Um, Education and Chemistry is also another place that has uh, kind of articles, newspaper articles on chemistry and what's happening in chemistry right now. Once you've got to that stage of the broad topic, you're probably looking more into like detailed experiments or procedures or methods you could follow. So there's quite a few different sources for that. You could look at um, either the Royal Society of Chemistry or Nuffield Chemistry. Um, you could also look at past labs that you've done within chemistry as a subject, so something might be useful there. Um, if you're interested in kind of data logging experiments, you might want to look at Vernier, who are a company which um, sell data loggers and they actually have methods online. And then after that, you're probably more into the writing up stage. Um, so we run some workshops in chemistry for the EE. They're a really good way of kind of understanding um, how to structure the EE. Um, we do have a lot like a writing frame for it and a flow chart. And there's an EE chemistry um, OLP page as well. And then all the way through that, one of the biggest resources for you is going to be your teacher and having those discussions with your teacher, whether it be your, your EE supervisor or your teacher who's um, teaching you. To have those conversations is really important to kind of refine your ideas as well. Okay, thank you. In your experience, what are some common struggles students have had in the past? The most common struggle we have, and probably what sets us apart from a lot of the EEs, is time management purely from a practical sense. Um, we estimate that an extended essay in chemistry takes about 40 hours of lab time, um, which I don't think you would normally have to do with a an English EE or I'm just presuming here um, so that's a huge thing so to plan out well if, if each trial takes me one hour 
and I want to take five repeats and I want to do five trials, well, how many hours do I need to dedicate in the lab and when am I going to do that? Um, which aim to have all of the data collected before the summer holiday. But often we get to the summer holiday and students can be like, oh, I just didn't plan it well enough, or I was too busy and so on. So that's a big issue for us is the time management. The second struggle that we often see is People worry about the time management, so they jump straight into the lab without really understanding the chemistry behind what they're doing. So the issue with that is if you're following a method and everything's going okay, it generally turns out okay. But then if something goes wrong, if you hit something that you don't expect, if you don't really understand the chemistry of it, it can be really hard to think of a solution or how to troubleshoot or get around that problem that you faced. Um, the other thing, and this is probably the final most important thing, is we're pretty well resourced in the chemistry department, but please don't presume that we have everything, okay? Um, please check if you need some equipment or some certain chemicals in advance, because some of them can take three to four months to order, um, which is quite a big uh, a hole for us. Um, and lastly, please don't presume that the IA, or one of the struggles is that people think that a chemistry EE is a chemistry IA and actually the way that they're written scientifically is very different so it's trying to understand some of the differences between them. All right. yeah. um, and finally what advice would you provide for students who are just beginning their chemistry extended essay? Oh, good one. <laughs> um, I mean linking back to the struggles would be first of all the advice I would get is, is talk to people, talk to us, talk to your chemistry teacher um, talk to anyone within the chemistry department and, and see if some of your ideas are viable or testable. Um, we've got a lot of experience in the chemistry department and we've seen some pitfalls in the past so we don't want to send you down a dark hole. We're quite happy to say like, no, I don't think that's going to work but how about you try something else. Okay, so please talk to people. Do a huge amount of background research. Really understand the chemistry behind what you're doing. Okay. Um, and manage your time. So come up with a, a full plan between now and Christmas of how you're going to get into that lab um, and collect that primary data, which is very important. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you, you very much.